Hello everybody. In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating some secondary motion for your characters in After Effects. Secondary motion are the kind of resultant motions that happen because of your primary motion. So moving this chicken around is kind of the primary motion. It's rotating, this kind of parallaxing, all the big moves that are happening. And the secondary motion are things like its crest kind of waggling around. That results from the first primary motion of the head moving. There's a lot of little nuance and it really adds a lot of flavor to what you're animating, but it can be very difficult. In this tutorial, we're gonna leverage a wonderful script from Bear Studios. The creator, Sam Cat has gifted me the character swing rig. It's a script that Sam has developed to help with his own character animating, and we're sharing it here with you. So if you find the script that we're using very useful, then check out the link in the description. The first 500 people to use promo code EC Abrams CSR 20 will enjoy 20% off. And with that plugging out of the way, let's apply plug away at After Effects. All right, so this is gonna go a little bit like a cooking show. I've already prepared all my primary motion here in this example, and we're just gonna add in the secondary motion. So what's going on in this work file? Well, most things here have position and scale changes. Pretty much everything is a position change, but most things you can see are parented to the body, and the body is the primary mover here. So if we're gonna be basing any of our secondary motion off of something, the body's position change is really what we wanna look at. So I'm gonna call up in the graph editor here just so you can see the position changes and you can see these, these peaks here. We're looking at a speed graph. These are the highest points of acceleration. So what we would want is this is when the secondary motion will be experienced uh, the most acutely or the most extremely. So if we're gonna be having anything go on, we would think at these speediest points, this is when the crest here would be bending the most. And that's exactly what the character swing rig accomplishes for us. So let me kind of show you how that goes down. So with a layer selected, let's go into the swing rig tab over here, this nice little UI panel. It has a, a grid over here where I can set the anchor points of things. And usually you're gonna be using this on a chain of things. So it'll probably be used on you know various solids in a line or a bunch of anchor points. I wanna just show you what it does when we just apply it to one thing. We're only gonna apply it to this body right here, this big shape layer. And I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna say apply character swing rig to selected layer. It's gonna process a little bit and then we end up with some new effects on this driver underscore body. It's also renamed this for us. This is a driver because it is the most important thing in that chain and that's where all of these wonderful settings live. So here in the general settings, the first thing we do is enable the swing by cranking that up to 100% enabled. We could enable wind. This thing actually has a powerful uh, kind of wind generator. If you want wind to be blowing some trees or some plants or something, you could definitely do that. The other thing we have here is the target position. Now this is what target, what are we looking at to give us the data that we're gonna be using? Basically, it, it's taking in the data from in this case, the very layer driver underscore body that is moving around. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is this is going kind of backwards. So we can use this reverse to switch it around. So if we just preview this thing, you can see it's a little bit too extreme. It's moving a bit too much. Some of that is down to the input data here being very extreme as well. Like these, the difference between the peaks and valleys here is pretty nuts. The final thing here in the general settings is do we wanna use position data or rotation data? Both are available. In our case, we're just using position data and we may cover rotational things on a later tutorial. So this tab here is about the wind settings. We're not gonna to touch those. We're just gonna do a little swing settings. So let's go into the swing settings here and we can have the X and Y impact more or less. We can blend them, which is great. So that's up and down in left, right motion. Now this here is the amplitude. This is how amplified this effect is going to be. So we're here at a frame that uh, is tipping quite a bit. And if I just take this and I start dialing it down, we start to get a more subtle effect out of this, a more subtle type of motion happening. That's how we can really dampen this down. See, that little change, everything seems a lot more natural. And you can get very nuanced in here. This 
This will take, I think, four decimal points in here, so you can get very nuanced if you'd like. Next, we have the frequency, decay, and overshoot. And the overshoot is how far beyond its original resting state it's going to come back to. So it might wobble back and forth over that axis, making a bit of a, a jelly-like thing. So we might actually amp up this, say, at like 100. We aren't going to see the effects of it very much, mostly because we have a whole bunch of keyframes governing this. So it doesn't come to a standstill and the data doesn't terminates. We won't get a lot out of the overshoot. Similarly, we don't have to worry about the decay because that's decaying that overshoot. Big thing for us is just clamping down on this amplitude. There's a true clamp as well in this movement clamp. We can really say, all right, well, here where things get a little bit too extreme for my liking, you see how, you know, leaned back this guy is. I can take the left rotation and I can really pinch this up and prevent him from leaning too far if I would like. So I can really clamp that down. I can say, no, this is a hard stop. We're having a limit. You don't go that far. And you have clamps in both directions, which is terrific. The rotational value will never go beyond these two things. So we've got this chicken kind of leaning as it moves around. Let's do something about this crest. Let's make it a little bit more wavy as well. And this is the part that I'm most impressed with here. I would use the puppet pin tool to make this kind of flexible. So I'm going to solo this. Let's uh, go to a, a frame here where it's mostly up and down. Perfect. I'm going to take my pin tool. When you take a pin tool and you go to a footage layer, you can just start dropping pins on this thing and it's immediately going to apply the puppet effect to that footage layer. I'm going to switch it from advanced to legacy. It's going to warn me, hey, what's up? Don't, don't do that. Uh, but we are just going to move it to the legacy version because this works a lot better. It looks a lot more normal with the legacy version. There are going to be some uh, terrific updates to the pin tool real soon. I'm very excited, but that's for a different tutorial. I'm going to drop in five pins going from the bottom to the top just to make this a little bit easier for me moving forward. And then with these pins in here that I've placed from the bottom to top, meaning pin one is down here and pin five is up here, I'm gonna click this button over here, which is to chain the selected together. And then I'm going to create a character swing for all these pins. So boop, 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 populates these nulls. And you can see here it's created nulls that go with each pin. And we've got this driver pin here. So let me select that. I can grab it and move everything around, which is terrific. Or I can grab this last one here and, and waggle that around. But all of these are linked together, and they all have some settings and interconnected stuff to them. So this is going to help us bend and flex this thing. show you what that looks like. I'm going to unsolo all these things, unsolo them. And we have to change a few things before this thing is actually going to work. So again, we have to enable the swing. That has to happen. And we talked about what the driver is here. What is going to convey the inertia to all of this secondary motion? Well, it is the driver body. So now that we've set up the target position is looking at driver body, it's going to read that position. And now we're just going to play back and see what that looks like. Oh, it looks pretty weird, right? Well, it looks weird because it's not connected. We should parent the driver pin here. This should be parented to that player, and that player is then parented to the body. So we kind of have that, that chain effect going on. Now I, I parent this pin null because there's also some positional change going on there as well. I want to preserve some of that parallax that I worked up earlier, but we're still taking the velocity from the body. All right, now we also need to crank up the reverse here. And now let's play that back. How are we looking here? Oops, I uh, must have undid the driver body thing there. So here we go. Let's have a look at that. Oh, yes. Now we're going. Now it's waggling all over the place, looking very good. And we just need to refine how this is going. Let's go in here and let's take perhaps the swing settings and let's dial down that amplitude. Dial it down to just, you know, 0.1. Perfectly good. In the movement clamp, we're going to set this to minus 15. So it doesn't, doesn't bend back super far. But it goes far enough. And you see, it's really swinging all over the place. And I really like that, that it's just a waggling and working out. We've set these pins at nice regular intervals, giving us a nice smooth deformation as it goes around. And it's really working out. It's taking those values and it's waggling it. And this took just a few clicks to make happen. So that's one of the great things that the swing rig really accomplishes. And then we could apply this kind of thing to all of these and if we did, it would look uh, something like this. This is what you would end up with. Quite a number of nulls. So I'd recommend you shy these things. So if you just grab them, hit this little shy switch, 
You can use your shy guy over here to hide and reveal them. You don't have to worry about them. Don't look at them. They're really just process things. They're not really getting in the way. Don't worry about touching them. But you can see how the secondary motion really adds a lot to the primary motion. It makes us feel a lot more alive, a lot more organic, a lot more interesting. It has a lot more of uh, what we would call appeal. So if you've enjoyed seeing the character swing rig in action, if this seems like something you'd like, then you should use the link in the description or head on over to aescripts.com, search for the character swing rig from Bear Studios, and use the promo code ECABRAMSCSR20, and you can enjoy 20% off that. The first 500 people will get some of that. If you have questions about anything covered in this tutorial, secondary animation in general, this script in specific, parenting things, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. If you have any requests for future tutorials, please let me know that as well. I'm at EC Abrams on Twitter, and if you've enjoyed watching this channel, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.